fear is that people are going to get emotionally involved like I did and feel there's no hope and there's no there's no future for them. And once you get into that point, it can lead to that, right? So the point is, if you're listening to this, you're thinking incorrectly. The thoughts that you have about yourself in the future is not real. And so you have to find, you just have to be patient, but you can't just get out of the problems that you have without taking action or moving. You have to move in some direction. So the first thing I do, if, if I'm in this spot, this is what I tell people, if you're really beat up emotionally right now, and I know a lot of you guys are in the world, the first thing is <clears throat> you need to get progress in some area of your life. Start moving your physical body. So the easiest and fastest way to see progress is on your body. It's harder to see it in your mind, even though it's happening at the same rate. But if you're out of shape and you start working out again, what happens is you start to see your face change. You start to build self-esteem. You see a better reflection of yourself. You start to believe in yourself more. You start to feel lighter. You start to feel better. You start to have more energy, right? And that progression leads you to happiness. It's when we regress and stagnate and go backwards that we're frustrated anxiety. So progression in one part of your life leads to progression in all areas of your life. You probably noticed this before. So now that, you know, you're feeling better and looking better, now it may be easier to get on camera, right? And do these types of things. So the first thing is find some progression, but start moving your physical body because your, your mind affects your body and your body affects your mind. So if your mind's not well, what do you think you're going to do with your body? You're not going to do the right things. You're going to overeat. You're going to do drugs. You're going to drink. You're going to sleep in. You're going to do the things that we do when we're depressed. Now, if your body's not doing well, meaning it's you have chronic pain or you're out of shape and you, you know, you're, you're overweight, what does that do to your mindset? You start having bad reflective thoughts about yourself and it kills your self-esteem. So they both impact each other. So first thing is start moving your physical body. The second thing I tell people is go through a forgiveness exercise. And I did this. And like, it's like that movie, Bill, uh, I think it's Billy Madison. I may show my age here a little bit, but um, at the end, he's got that, you know, that guy that was like, comes in and he shoots that guy in the butt on stage, the rest of the guy. And that's kind of weird. But basically what happened was he goes through a point where I did this in my life, not because of the movie, but just in general, where I went on a forgiveness um, resetting system because I did a lot of things I was regretting in my younger life, which we all do. So just so you understand, you're not perfect. We're all not perfect and it's okay to make mistakes, but don't hold them over yourself. So the first thing is I went back as far as I could to anybody I could remember that I could find a thought in my mind that I still held in my mind that I felt that I wronged somebody, you know, even if it was back to grade school, like I went back all the way to like childhood days where I'm like, if I can still remember something that I regret, it's still weighing on my shoulders. It's like, I'm carrying this squat bench bar over me with all these weights on it that I can barely hold. And as I went to these individuals and started asking for forgiveness and saying, Hey, you know, this probably doesn't mean anything to you. And I know 20 years ago I did this. I'm sorry, you know, and I hope this helps. And you should be, you'd be surprised what that does for those people. So first thing is I, I've, I, I asked for forgiveness for anybody that I could remember doing anything wrong because I realized if I could still consciously pull it up, I still had that weight on my bench. So I got to clear that off. Second thing was I basically unconditionally forgave anybody that had wronged me. I had people, ex-partners that owed me money. I had people that had done some pretty nasty things to me. And I said, you know what? If I'm asking for forgiveness, I should give it as well. And I'm not going to ever let anybody, you know, sit, you know, because it's just, you don't want to hold that energy either, right? So I forgave anybody, whether they thought they needed it or not. I said, hey, look, we're good. I forgive you. And I meant it, right? And the last thing, the most important thing is I went on the forgiveness for myself. And I said, look, you messed up. It's okay. You can change your life going forward but you need to get, let these things get off your back here. You messed up. You didn't know what you're doing at the time. That's why you messed up. You now know what you're doing. So you can't regret doing things that you didn't really know what you were doing at the time. Right. And so I went through this forgiveness exercise. It took a lot of pressure out of my life and it gave me the ability to see clear, think about like muddy water versus clear water to now see a path to move forward. And the last thing was I focused on gratitude heavily. And so like at that time, part of the reason why I was so miserable and didn't think I had anything to live for because I wasn't grateful for the things that I had. I had great parents. I had a great family. I lived in a great country. I had food and I still had like, you know, like most people in the world in comparison to me at that moment were way worse off. I mean, think about the way that most people in the world live, right? And so what I had to do was have a gratitude, you know, reflective experience where it's like, you're being entitled. You're, you know, you're, you're, you're creating your own misery because you don't have more things and opportunities given to you for no reason. You haven't even actually deserved it. So I just felt like because I was alive, I was so special. Things should just come to me. I should just be successful. And I don't have to earn it. Right. And then I realized, you know, like I should be grateful for things I, I have now. And if I want to have these things in the future and not be entitled to have them, but earn them and to show that God or show the world or whatever you want to believe that I deserve these. And so I, I really made an effort to, to, to look at the things I was grateful for in my life at the moment. You know, hey, I still got my hands and toes, fingers and toes, right? I got my arms, I got my physical body, I got a family, right? So if you're struggling, 
do something that creates progress, right? Do something that's going to, you know, create quick progress that you can build off of. Go on a forgiveness exercise, right? The last one is start with the gratitude. Uh, and that's going to give you a good foundational starting point to kind of bounce off of for the new path and that you're about to go down. And that's kind of what I did when I was in that moment. 